Antitrust matters a lot to business. The amount of competition that a firm faces has a big impact on how much profit it makes. And the amount of competition it faces depends on a number of things like the difficulty of entry in that sector and technological conditions and so forth. But it also depends on the nature of antitrust laws in that jurisdiction and the extent to which they're enforced. So if the antitrust laws are strong and it's difficult to merge with a competitor, for example, or it's not allowed to push an entrant uh, out of your market so that you can monopolize your market. If those things aren't allowed, then it becomes harder to earn profit and you have to earn profit by competing on the merits, which means uh, offering consumers a really good product uh, that they want to buy at a price they find competitive. And that, you know, that's a shifting of managerial attention away from something like acquisitions and toward um, issues like product development and pricing and cost. Antitrust, can, um, antitrust enforcement can lower barriers to entry that are created by an incumbent firm. Antitrust enforcement can't change a barrier to entry that's technologically generated, like you need to have a fabrication plant for semiconductors and it costs billions of dollars to make that. That's just a, that's an entry cost that is naturally occurring in that product and there's nothing a government really can do about that. But if the entry barrier is a kind of a contract that the dominant incumbent firm has with buyers that stops the buyers from buying from the entrant, that's an entry barrier that's created by uh, a company and that government enforcement could impact. There's been a trend in the, over the last 30 or 40 years toward making antitrust enforcement more based in economics. What is going to protect the consumer? What's going to give the consumer low prices and good quality? That's been the trend in the United States uh, strongly. The same trend is happening in Europe, although Europe has another uh, goal, which is to create a common market, to create a single market and allow easy and competitive transfer of goods and services across borders. So that's an element of their competition law that we don't have. Other countries that are developing have other issues. For example, in South Africa, their competition law, I believe, takes into account, uh, you know, bringing more um, black Africans into the, you know, economy and being fair and, and a lot of countries have uh, provisions for small and medium-sized enterprises to be not unfairly discriminated against and be allowed to participate and have a free entry into markets. Those kinds of issues are specific to the background and experience of those countries and might be perfectly legitimate social goals. They're not really going to converge with U.S. enforcement because U.S. enforcement at this point is really just based on this consumer welfare efficiency kind of standard and leaves out these other social goals. So the, you know, we'll have to see over time whether as countries get richer, um, they start to feel that maybe they've achieved some of these other social goals and they, and they phase those out of their competition enforcement program. Antitrust authorities do work together, but it's an informal kind of working together. So if there's a large merger like uh, Baker, Hughes, and Halliburton that was just called off, um, and that's being investigated in Europe and it's being investigated in the United States, typically the firms will sign waivers that allow the two agencies to talk to each other and to share information and share documents. And then they'll work together just because it's efficient. Uh, they can each learn from each other, and also because they don't want to be in a position of having coming to really opposite conclusions and that's for a couple of reasons it's not good for the firms involved to come to opposite conclusions and also it suggests that somebody has the wrong facts right if 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 one jurisdiction is coming to one conclusion and the other is coming to the opposite what exactly are they looking at that's causing that outcome that divergent outcome so a responsible agency wants to cooperate as much as it can partially to make its decision as good as good as it can be I would say that the recent uh, statement of objections against Google in the European Union is good evidence that we don't at the present time have convergence in the high-tech sector. That's not to say that we aren't, aren't moving in that direction and that that isn't a good idea, but you can clearly see a split between the two, I would argue, most sophisticated jurisdictions uh, in the world, the European Union and the United States, are coming to different conclusions about the impact of Google's behavior on competition. 
So that's very interesting, and uh, you know we need to learn a little bit more about what's inside that statement of objections and the and the arguments and the evidence that the Europeans have to see how exactly they're diverging from from what we in the U.S. think. It is really hard to think about um, how you design remedies and think about antitrust enforcement in a world where you have one global market. So let's suppose I design a search engine and then I sell it across the world. If some jurisdiction wants a change in the way that search engine is designed, then it's a little difficult for me to make a change just for them because consumers in that country, if they don't like that new search engine, can use an IP address, route their queries through an IP address that's in a different country and obtain the original search engine or what they might view as the better search engine. Does that then mean that the jurisdiction that's upset gets to say, we want you to change your search engine, it has to be changed globally? In which case, jurisdiction in one country is affecting consumers in another country. So these kinds of interactions across countries and the way enforcement is going to impact market structure of other citizens and prices and quality experienced by citizens of other countries is very interesting, and I don't know how it's going to play out. I wish we could quantify the effects of antitrust enforcement. It's really hard to do because we can't see, so we'll take the Baker Hughes Halliburton merger that was proposed and then objected to by the Department of Justice and then abandoned. What would have happened if that merger had gone through? What would have happened to prices? What would have happened to innovation? We'll never know because it was blocked. Similarly, mergers that were allowed to go through, we don't know what would have happened if they had been blocked. Similarly, unilateral conduct cases like Google. If the Europeans don't act on Google, what would the outcome be? Um, it's just, it's very, very difficult to try to get good evidence on the but-for world, and therefore it's really hard to quantify the impact of, of antitrust. Now, one place you can do it a little bit is in cartels. If you catch a cartel and the competitive price was 100 and the cartel was agreeing to charge 110, you can say, well, look, there was ten, $10 difference between these two prices and so many units were bought by the following customers and you can do a little better quantification of the of the direct harm. But of course, the fact that that object was 10% higher price than it should have been will have some cascading effects, uh, you know, in other neighboring markets or in the design of the product or, or whatever. So it, it's still an imperfect, uh, an imperfect project.